Jumps right on the sidekick and jumps in sidekick. Alright, that's hard. Um, can you show yourself? Okay. <laughs> Did you do that? Alright, so, pick up the lead leg sidekick, and jumps in sidekick. Uh, yeah. My name is Joe Barry, and I, uh, I teach Taekwondo for a living. Hands up in the air! Well, Taekwondo is very similar to other martial arts, uh, where it teaches you to strike and block and, and all that, but it concentrates more on kicking aspect of the martial arts uh, world as opposed to the hands and the grappling. Uh, taekwondo means foot fist way, literally. Tai means foot, Kwan means hand, and Do means way of. It's originally from Korea. We teach a Chung Kyu Taekwondo, which translates into Blue Cottage. Well, I've been teaching Taekwondo for only about a year. I've been taking Taekwondo for about four or five years. Everybody hop up! Teaching young kids is really difficult because you have to be really patient with them because they have no attention span. And you also have to set a really good example because that's what they're paying attention to. It's not so much what you say, but how you act. Of business at the location we're at more so than we were before just because people aren't so afraid to, to come in and say hey whereas we were on a much busier road before and it's hard to get anybody to to stop by people who are going to do it really love doing it and they're not going to stop but there's some kids that do it because their parents have told them to do it and that's what they're doing and they have no real commitment or reason to keep doing it no matter what type of physical activity you do there are always going to be concerned parents, but at some point you just have to let your kids fall down and scrape their knees. My favorite move to teach has got to be a 360 hook kick because it's really fat, flashy and really pretty and you get to jump and spin and what kid doesn't like to jump and spin? Stand straight. I really enjoy working with my other instructors. They're all higher ranks than I am, and so they, they, I have the opportunity to learn a lot. And if you're not learning, you need to be doing something else. This made me a lot calmer and more centered and a better Quaker, actually. Quakers believe in nonviolence, and uh, it seems kind of odd to teach Taekwondo when you also try to practice nonviolence, but it's a good, healthy release. My name is Sandra Carter, and I've been attending this, uh, this school here for about uh, eight years. One thing I felt that it kind of led me to doing other things in my career as far as I got older in my job career. Uh, the discipline and the self-control, uh, all that helped with Taekwondo. Well, we were always looking for some extracurricular activities for our children, and I felt like this offered the balance of discipline and getting some general physical activity into their lives. I think the biggest is uh, learning not to quit, and, you know, facing adversity. So they're not always going to do well. They're going to have challenges in testing, or where they may not pass, or at, at a tournament where they may not win medals. And just learning to push through that and persevere. Uh, I hope they get what I got out of it: uh, self-confidence, uh, big thing. You know, learn to protect themselves, and um, you know, coordination, flexibility. Uh, it, it's helped me tremendously. My my father died at a young young age, and when my mother remarried, I was nine, and my stepfather, uh, it was the first thing that he kind of got me into. I was um, a fan of Bruce Lee, so my uh, dad finally signed me up for a martial arts class in 19, early 1977, and that was the beginning of it right there for me. This is the uh, the moment that I knew Taekwondo was for me. I was at this uh, this little dive bar my buddy's band was playing, and I was out there to support him, and and there was a mosh pit going on. It wasn't really my scene, so I was just hanging back and drinking a beer. And I see my buddy's feet go up over his head, and I go over there, and I, I pick him up and, and, and go back to my beer, and it was, it was the end of that. Well, after my buddy's set got done, uh, they were packing up all their equipment, and these uh, two middle-aged guys come up to me. One stands right in front of me, and the other one stands just to the side of me. And like, what was all that about? And it took me a second to register because it was such 
just not a big deal. It just, I just let it slide. Uh, and, and I was like, well, I'll just pick my buddy up and, and, and dust him off. I'm, I'm sure you would have done the same for your buddy. And uh, the one guy to, to, to my right chimes in, I want to see somebody that can push my buddy around. And my thir- first thought is uh, congratulations. And at the same time, I have this thought, the guy kicks me in the shin and punches me right in the face. And so I take a deep breath and I turn back around and I look at him like, we have two options at this point. One, we can go outside and finish what you started. Or two, we can handle this like men and I can get you a beer. What are you drinking? And he stammers at me, Bud Light. So I get him and his buddy a Bud Light and send them on their way. It was the best fight I never did fight. If you get angry, you realize that the, the best thing to do is walk away. The, the best way to win a fight is to not be there. I hope my students take more discipline and respect for my classes. Uh, whether they can do a perfect front kick it doesn't really matter to me so much. I want them to be able to do good techniques, but I just want them to grow from the experience and, and just be better at whatever it is they decide to do because of it. We have four tournaments a year. I try to make it to as many as possible. I'm really hyper competitive, so that's, that's what I love to do. It's one of the reasons I do Taekwondo is for the tournaments. Black belt simply means master of the basics. Um, it's when they say the true training can begin, and so I've really just started Taekwondo. Action.